We are going through what the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, if you do not have a Bible with you this morning, we have some there in front of you in the pew, right there in the rack where the songbook is, there's a Bible. We ask that you take that out. You can turn to page 1006 in the pew Bible. Page 1006, Galatians chapter 5. We'd love for you to follow along in the Word of God. As we come to this beautiful Mother's Day, and uh, thankful to celebrate a day where we honor our mothers. And uh, what a privilege it is to have uh, good moms. And um, to have a mother who loves you and uh, who took care of you. And, and I think all mothers, I think they never stop taking care, at least in their heart and in their prayers, of their children. And so this morning we should be thankful for our mothers. And as we look at the Word of God today, we're going to kind of go out of order a little bit. The first two weeks we did love and joy, and we're going to skip a few this morning and go to the, what the Bible says there in verse 22, gentleness. So let's look at this. Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 22. Galatians 5, 22. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. We read here the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit belongs to the Holy Spirit. That's why it's called the fruit of the Spirit. These are His fruits that He produces. And when one is being led, when an individual is being led by the Spirit of God, these virtues, the fruit of the Spirit, flow freely from a Spirit-led believer. Now I want us to note a couple things as we have in the past about Galatians 5.22. Note the Bible does not say the fruits of the Spirit. It does not say the fruits, plural, of the Spirit. Note that it does not say the fruit of the Spirit are. It's not that you'll have one or the other of these. All of these fruit will be manifested in a Spirit-led believer because they're the fruit of the Spirit. He will produce these fruit. And when he, is in, in a spirit, when he is in a believer, remember, the very second that you trust Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit of God takes up residence inside of you. And so when that happens, His fruit is going to come out in a Spirit-led believer. We have the ability as individuals, though, to suppress Him. We have the ability to quench Him. We have the ability to, to put the Holy Spirit in the back of our lives. But if we are led by the Spirit, and we let Him take control of our lives, these fruit will manifest themselves, and they will be exhibited in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit. It gives a list of nine things there in those two verses. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and this morning we're looking at gentleness. You know, in Mother's Day, you think about Mother's Day, you think of moms and how gentle they are. And, uh, you know, especially moms are known for being gentle. Now, every mom has that ability uh, to kind of turn it up a notch and put us in our place. And uh, we've all needed it, and we're all thankful for it in the end. But by and large, mom is a gentle woman, and, and they're gentle with their children, uh, even when they're directing them and giving them orders or directions or commands, it's, it comes from a place of gentleness. Now, mothers or women are not the only people that should exhibit gentleness. Obviously, if this is a part of the fruit of the Spirit, all believers should demonstrate gentleness by His Spirit. We tend to think of gentleness being a feminine trait. But the Bible clearly says that the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. And all believers should be gentle. Let's read this again and we'll pray and get into this morning's message. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such... There is no law. Let's pray this morning. Our Father, we thank you for the time we've already had here this morning. God, it's been so good to be with others and to 
see folks here this morning with their mothers and enjoying the day. And Lord, we do indeed want to honor mothers and show them our appreciation for all that they do, all the countless and the unthankful job that they do, Lord. And we're just so thankful for them. And I pray this morning that we honor them. But God, as we turn our attention now to your word, we want to take a look at what you have to say to each of us. Lord, this isn't just a message for mothers. It's a, it's a message from your word for everyone this morning. And I pray, Lord, that in a special way that you would speak to all of our hearts, that you'd make a difference in our lives. God, we didn't come today just to check it off our list. We didn't come today just to say we've been good and done with the Christian thing and gone to church. Lord, we came today to hear from you, to meet with you, to be with you, to sing about you, to talk with you, to have you speak to us. And Lord, we pray that in a real way today, God, in a special way, that we'll know that you have dealt with our hearts when we leave. Lord, I pray for those who don't know Jesus as their Savior, that they'll get saved today. And Lord, for those of us who know him as, as Savior, I pray that today you'll help us to be a spirit-led individual that will exhibit gentleness. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, gentleness, if we want to define gentleness this morning, gentleness is a politeness or a kindness toward others. A, a politeness or a kindness toward others that flows freely from someone who is led by the Spirit. If you're somebody this morning or you know somebody who says they're a believer and you have a pattern of being rude and unkind, they or you are not exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. Rude, being rude and unkind is not something that should be named among believers in Jesus Christ. The question this morning is, would those that I spend most of my time with say that I tend to be polite and kind to those around me? Would those that I spend most of my time with say that I tend to be polite and kind to those around me? Today, we will see the effects of one who is led by the Spirit of God and someone who exhibits gentleness by His Spirit. Today is Mother's Day, so we'll begin with what the Bible says about a kind woman. If you don't mind, turn to Proverbs chapter 31 this morning. Proverbs 31. If you have a pew Bible, that's page 587. Page 587 in your pew Bible, Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31, page 587 in the pew Bible. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, it speaks mostly of a woman called the virtuous woman. A lady that's got all the right parts to her. A woman who's a hard worker, who loves her home and her family and her husband and her children. She, she, she's diligent. She's always working and, and making things happen for her family and for the Lord. A virtuous woman. And the Bible says in verse 26, one of the traits of a virtuous woman. Let's look at this. Proverbs 31, 26 says of this virtuous woman, she openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. First today we're going to see a kind and gentle woman. A kind and gentle woman. We see the Bible says that a woman has, that is a virtuous woman has kind Words. Now, I think you would agree with me this morning that there's nothing more unattractive in a lady than a lady whose words are unkind, are sharp, are ugly, and even sometimes vulgar. There's nothing more unattractive than a woman who with a sharp tongue. And, and there's nothing more uh, a reproach to Jesus Christ, the woman who doesn't have the law of kindness in her mouth, than a woman who is always finding fault with those around her. That's a reproach to Jesus. It doesn't help the, the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially for a woman to have an unkind tongue. And the Bible says of a virtuous woman that the law of kindness is in her tongue. Ladies, this morning, are your words kind? You know, it's been said that homes are the truest schools. We learn most of what we know truly at home. Moms, your children watch you and listen to you. You ever had your child say something and you say, where in the world did they get that? And somebody else in the room will say, you say that all the time. You ever have that happen to you? That happened to me before. Where did they hear that? Well, you say that all the time. Oh, 
Our children are little recorders. They, li they listen to everything that we say. Keep in mind, moms, ladies, you are the kind and gentle balance in the home. You're the one that if your child is going to have any kind or gentle balance in their life, you're the one that's going to cultivate that. They're watching mom to see how to treat others. And they're listening to mom to see how she talks about others. Having other people for lunch, and I don't mean inviting them into your home. You know, moms, little ears are listening. Is the law of kindness in your tongue. You set the pace. A woman who is kind will have words that are kind. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And you can put on a kind show for a while, but eventually what's in our heart comes out through our words. So moms, a good way that we can gauge if we have the law of kindness is what comes off of our tongues. Second thing we notice about a kind and gentle woman is that kind words are something she doesn't violate. She doesn't violate kind words. It's, notice it says the law of kindness. The, the, the kind tongue for a virtuous woman is a regular practice for her. It's not when she's trying to be nice or when she knows somebody else is listening and she changes. You know how we all do that? We, we, have, a, we have a normal way of talking and then we get on the phone and somehow our voice changes. You know what I mean? Hey, quiet down in there. You know, you're being crazy. Uh, yes, hello. This is uh, Phil Keller and I'm calling to, you know, <laughs> You know how that is. And if somehow our voice changes when we get on the phone, you know, and we're ordering a pizza and everything becomes better, you know. And, uh, but for a woman who has a, a, a kind tongue, it's the law of kindness. It's not just every once in a while. It's a pattern in her life. It's a pattern of kindness. It's something that she won't violate. It's something that is exhibited by a life that is spirit-led. It flows regularly and freely. Here's a th something to think about. If we have to be thinking about our words in front of our children, should we be talking about it anyway? We, sometimes we guard our words. And we, we watch our words. You ever had somebody slip and say a cuss word in front of you and then they go... You ever see that before? Yeah, we watch our words. You know, somebody who has the law of kindness, slips don't happen. Why? Because it's written here. It's kindness that comes from the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Ladies, moms, do you have kind words? Gentleness is a politeness or a kindness toward others that flows freely from the spirit-led believer. Would those I spend most of my time with say that I tend to be polite and kind to those around me? Secondly, this morning... We're going to notice a kind and gentle man. Guys, I can't leave us out. All right? If you would, turn in your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9 this morning. A kind and gentle man. 2 Samuel chapter 9. If you have a pew Bible, that's page 297. 297. 2 Samuel chapter 9, page 297. Now, guys... Kindness is not one of those things that we're out there striving for. We're not trying to be gentle, you know. When, when you describe a man, the first thing that comes to your mind isn't gentle most of the time. When you think of a man's man, you think of somebody who's, you know, maybe tough and strong and maybe they've got a base, you know, a lot of base in their voice and maybe they're a strong leader. Or, I don't know what we think about. Uh, you know, maybe you get a picture of somebody like Brother Mike Graver. You know, he's a big fella. He's a strong man. He's got a commanding presence. He's got a deep voice. You know, he scares you a little bit when he talks to you. That's why he's my bodyguard, okay? Now, but when we think about a man typically, we don't think about gentleness. You know, with the NFL draft was this past week, and I, I typically like to watch that, and I caught a little bit of the end of it. It's a, it's a circus to me. I like to see what happens. And, and uh, you ever notice that when we're talking about these football players, even when they talk about them off the field, they never mention gentleness. You ever hear that? I've never heard that. Well, this guy's real gentle. You know, <laughs> that's not what they're looking for in a football player, right? They're looking for somebody who's going to go in there and get the job done. So when we think about men, we don't typically think of gentleness. But when we think about the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says that gentleness is the fruit of the Spirit. 
So if I'm a man who's filled with the Spirit of God, somehow I'm going to be gentle. That's true. If I'm led by the Spirit of God, I'm going to be gentle. Gentle doesn't mean you need to be like Mr. Rogers, you know. I actually liked Mr. Rogers. I watched him when I was a kid, you know, the trolley and all the things. That was cool. But look, I'm talking, you know, you don't have to be soft-spoken to be gentle. You don't have to be effeminate to be gentle. You can be a man and be gentle. Why? Because the Bible says that a spirit-led believer will be gentle. Kind, polite. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, fellas. We need more of that in Christianity. Kindness, politeness, common courtesy is not so common anymore, you know. But kindness. We're going to look at a story this morning about David. Now, when we think about David in the Bible, King David, we don't think about a, a wimpy guy, do we? He was a strong man. He was a military leader. Uh, he was a warrior, the Bible says. He could fight, you know. Uh, he, he, had, he had went in and killed Goliath and then took care of everybody else, too. Strong man, David. But David was also a gentle man. Let's look at what the Bible says here. 2 Samuel chapter 9, beginning of verse 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may shew him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may shew kindness the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for, for I will surely shew thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and re will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldst look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to his house. Thou therefore, here it is, and thy sons and thy servants shall till, the land, shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread alway at my table. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. David and Jonathan were the best of friends. Jonathan was King Saul's son. King Saul did not like David. Many times tried to have David killed and many times went after David to kill him. God spared him. God worked David out of all those situations. But Jonathan was David's truest friend. Very best friends. And when Saul and Jonathan died in battle, David, because of his love for his friend Jonathan, decided that he was going to show kindness unto, unto Saul's family just because of his love for his friend Jonathan. So David one day sends and he says, Where's this? Does, is there anybody alive still? They said, There's one guy, Jonathan's son, he's lame on his feet. He can't walk, he's crippled. And David says, Go bring him to me that I can show him kindness. And he even said the kindness of God for my friend Jonathan's sake. And he brings him in, and he treats all the servants very nicely. He makes sure they have food to eat. But of Mephibosheth, he says, he's going to eat at my table. He got an invitation to eat at the king's table. The crippled guy, the crippled guy who was his best friend's son, got an invitation to eat at the king's table. We see a gentle and a kind man in David. First of all, we notice that he was kind in his deeds. David went out of his way to find someone. He went out of his way. He fetched Mephibosheth. He did kindness when it wasn't convenient. And he did kindness when he would not get recognition. Hey, by the way, Jonathan was dead. He wasn't going to know if, if David did this or not. It was in David's heart to be kind. 
David was kind in his deeds. But I want us to notice a second. David was kind to those who are helpless. Mephibosheth was lame on his feet, a cripple. David could have sent him food. He could have sent him land. He could have sent him a, a dwelling place. He could have sent him anything. But he said, bring him to me. He's going to be at my table in my house. He was kind to those who were helpless. He ate at the king's table. He was kind and gentle to those who most would overlook. Dads, men, how do we treat the ones who most would overlook? You know, kindness isn't just for ladies. Kindness, gentleness, politeness is for a man who's filled and led by the Spirit of God. I'm talking about the kindness of God. David knew all about it. He was a kind man. He helped those who were helpless. You know, gentleness is a politeness or kindness toward others that flows freely from one who is led by the Spirit. What those I spend most of my time with say that I tend to be polite and kind to those around me. Third and finally this morning, we've seen a gentle and kind woman. We've seen a gentle and kind man. And now let's see a gentle and kind God. If you would, turn to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, page 1033 in the Pew Bible. Page 1033, 1033, 1033. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. We're going to see a kind and gentle God. Titus chapter 3, beginning in verse 3. It says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us, by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I'm talking about a kind and a gentle God this morning. God was kind to save those who oppose Him. Did you notice in verse 3? It says, for we ourselves, he was talking about Christian people, believers in Jesus. And Paul wrote to Titus, he said, for we ourselves, believers, we have been. In the past, we were foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That's who we were before. That's who we were before the kindness and love of Of God was shown to us. How? Through Jesus Christ, His Son, dying on the cross. You want to see a kind God? You will not find a kind God other than Jehovah God. The one who sent His Son. Who He Himself gave Himself for us. That's kindness. That's gentleness. That's love. Most other gods, in fact every other god, demands things from their followers. God, Jehovah God, Jesus Christ is the only one who gave himself for his followers. That's kindness. Kindness we don't deserve, by the way. Praise the Lord for a kind and gentle God. Hey, listen. Listen to this. This is an awesome fact. Jesus is 100% on this. You ready? There's never been one person who ever called out to Jesus and said, Save me, that he denied. Not one. He's on 100%. Every time somebody says save me, it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they've done. He saved them. 
You want to talk about kind? That's kind. You want to talk about gentle? What about the murderer? What about the sinner? What about the ones, the very men who put him on the cross? He said, Father, forgive them. You want to talk about kindness? That's the kind of man I want to be like. Jesus, kind. Not only was he kind enough to save us. Did you read? Verse number 7. That being justified by his grace. Justified, by the way, means just as if I'd never sinned. Justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We are heirs of God. Some of us are probably hoping for some kind of great uh, inheritance from our parents someday, right? I hope nobody in here is thinking about, let's see, when they go, what do I get? Help us all if, that's, if that goes through our hearts and our minds. I'm not even kidding, like seriously. You know, the almighty dollar sent many people south, okay? I'll take, I'll take my parents over money any day, okay? But the, the whole idea of being an heir. Some of us are going to have an inheritance. Some of us aren't. Some of us are trying to leave our children an inheritance and may not, you know. Here's the thing. Somehow, God is so kind that the, those sinners, like you and me, who've put our faith in Jesus, not only do we get heaven, but we're an heir of God. We get what he has. Heaven is his. Someday it's going to be ours. Eternal life is his to give. It's ours. We are an heir of God. Now some of you, if I told you that your parents left you a million dollars, you'd be running up and down the aisle right now. That's exciting. Whoa, I can get that boat I always wanted. Whatever, you know. But listen, we're heirs of God. Is that, is, that, is that sinking in a little bit there? Okay, we're heirs of God. We're not just going to have a little bit here. We're going to have everything there, right? We're not just going to get a nice little house here. We're going to have a mansion there. We not, might not just get mom's gold pendant. We're going to be walking on streets of gold there. Why? Because he's kind and gentle and good. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. What a kind God we have. You know, Gentleness is a politeness or a kindness toward others that flows freely from one who is led by the Spirit. Would those I spend most of my time say that I tend to be kind and polite to those who are around me? This morning we've heard of a kind and gentle woman. We've heard of a kind and gentle man. And we've heard of a kind and gentle God. How has the Lord spoken to your heart today? If you would stand with me, please, as our musicians come. If everybody could just remain still for this moment as we stand for a time of what we call an invitation. The invitation time is that we're inviting you to respond to God. If God has spoken to your heart today and challenged you with something you've heard, this is your opportunity to respond to God. We're inviting you to do so. There's several ways you can respond. You can respond, one, right there in your seat. You can stand there and quietly, as in just a moment, Brother Christian's going to sing, and you can quietly pray and work things out with God that he's spoken to you about this morning. You know, another way that you can respond to God, we call this here the altar, the steps and the pew here. It's an opportunity for you to come forward and maybe kneel down and talk to God very intimately in a very special way. But it's an invitation for us to respond to God, ladies.